نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد اعلموا ان خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم ما بعد usually in a similar setting when we talking about marriage we usually like to talk about it from a different angle which is encouraging the young people to get married and i remember the statement of my beloved brother ala when he said by the by the end of this session all of you will be get, will be married i don't know about after my session you know all of you say khalas i'm divorced yeah, whatever you know. now i'm not going to sugarcoat i'm going to give it to you as it is الصحابي والحديث في صحيح البخاري ومسلم متفق عليه ودان كابت هير كيم تو ذا سيتي اوف مدينه اون ا كام اند ذن وين هي ويتش ذا مسجد النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم هي غار اوف هيز كام اند هي ريليس ذا كام and he walked to the masjid and he stood at the door of the masjid فقال اين ابن هاشم where's this man he's talking about muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the sahaba out of respect they looked towards the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the messenger of allah was reclining and he said qad ajabtuk i'm right here i respond and then a man came walking over the shoulder stepping over the shoulder of the sahaba and he sat in front of the messenger of allah and he said to him are you the one that i'm looking for he said yes and he said فَإِنِّي سَائِلُكَ I'm asking you questions. وَمُشَدِّدٌ عَلَيْكَ But I'll be very stern, very harsh. When I'm asking you questions, when I'm addressing you, I will not speak softer to you. So do not find anything in your heart towards me. So the messenger of Allah, he smiled. And he said, proceed, go ahead. So he asked questions. The reason that I quote this hadith is I am not going to show a quote today and I'm going to be harsh and I'm going to be hard and I'm going to be realistic about merit so if you want to cry or if you want to complain or if you're too sensitive leave if you're a man and you can handle it then be seated and keep smiling and keep taking it in now 
The time of this lecture is, are you ready? Am I right? You're not ready. I'm telling you that. You are not ready. For those of you who are single, you're not ready. Most of you are not ready. Being ready, what does it mean? You know, see, you guys, all of you, number one, you see this marriage thing as a fairy tale, happily ever after. You know, one of those movies, you know, or Disney World shows that, oh, he will fall in love with her, and then she will fall in love with him, and then a little problem happens, and then they will separate from one another, and then she will cry, and he start writing a poem, and Bono Muhammad will be off the list, and then all this, and then later on he comes, and they meet once again, and they, you know, live ever, ever, happily ever after. That, this is not marriage. This is not how marriage is going to be. I am telling you. I have been married over 17 years. And whatever Hollywood tells you is a lie. So take that. Number one, are you ready? See, how do you know whether you're ready or not? You would know if you're responsible. If you're responsible of yourself, then I will say perhaps you can take the responsibility of someone else. Because marriage means you are self-sufficient first. And then you go out of your way and you take a responsibility of someone else. And you will be able to handle the responsibility of yourself and the responsibility of someone else. If you only take, want to take one wife. If you want to take four wives, Allahu Akbar, you're mujahid fi sabilillah. So don't call me when you're drowning. You know. Now, the Sahaba of the Messenger of Allah. Messenger of Allah came. And the people who are around the messenger of Allah, they were all young. Zubayr bin Awam, as Zubayr bin Awam, when he accepted, when he was next to the messenger of Allah, he was 15 years old. When his best friend accepted Islam, Talha bin Ubaidillah, he was 16 years old. When Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas, Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas, when he came and he said, I am supporting your messenger of Allah, he was 17 years old. Keep that, keep that in mind. I mean, Al Arqam bin Abi Al Arqam. Now, everybody, we know when we're studying the seal of the messenger of Allah that the messenger of Allah did not trust Hamza, did not go to the house of Abu Bakr Siddiq, did not take his student to the house of Abu Talib, but he trusted Arqam bin Abi Al-Arqam. And he took his student, the Sahaba, to the house of Al-Arqam bin Abi Al-Arqam because he knew this young man is responsible. And guess how old was Al-Arqam bin Abi Al-Arqam? 16 years old. When the messenger of Allah said, I'm bringing the whole ummah to you, to your house, and no one should know about it, and no one should speak about it, and everything that we say stays in this house, and your house is the shelter that will protect the ummah. You know, who did he trust? 16 years old kid. Al-Arqam bin Abi Al-Arqam. Because he was responsible. He was a man. Imagine that. Now, 16 years old kid nowadays, what do we do with them? We babysit them. We babysit them. Right? We tell them, did you do your homework? Did you? Oh, I didn't do it. Why not? I was busy. What is their concern? The biggest concern that they have is blackberries. You know, I'm text messaging someone. 
I'm busy with my friends. 16 years old. When Al Arqam bin Abi Al Arqam was responsible for the Ummah, if you want to call his house, was the CIA of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I mean, it was the intelligence center of all the, the information used to come to the house. Al Arqam bin Abi Al Arqam. If the Messenger of Allah wants to do something, it would happen in the house of this young man who's 16 years old. Because he was a he was responsible man. Zayd bin Thabit. Zayd bin Thabit. You know he carried his sword, and he you know put on his arm, and he went to the messenger of Allah, and Rasulullah is talking to the mujahideen in the battle of Badr before they leave, and he's getting everybody ready, and Zayd. Bin Thabit, he says, I'm ready, O Messenger of Allah. And he looked at him and said, where do you think you're going? He said, Ya Rasulullah, I cannot be missed today. I want to be part of this. He said, you're only 13 years old. Go to your mother. And then Zayd comes, he leaves that field. Leaves the Messenger of Allah. You know, and his head is dangling between his shoulders. He's, you know, dragging his sword in one hand and the other hand his armor. He's dragging his feet, walking towards his mother, feeling that he's disgraced because the messenger of Allah did not think that he is responsible enough. And then he went to his mother crying. And he said, Ma, you know, my mother, he said, the messenger of Allah rejected me. She said, son, there are other ways that you can support and help Islam. He said, like what? She said, can you write? What can you do? He said, I can write and read. She said, well, you should sit under the messenger of Allah and write down the way. 13 years old. Was he ready to write down the Quran coming from Allah, Jibreel, Muhammad, in the hands of 13 years old kid? Responsible. This is responsibility. He said, you know what, I can also learn language. And he learned al Ibrani Hebrew and the Syriania. He said, I don't want anyone to tell the messenger of Allah or to translate information from the other people incorrectly. I'll be there. And she said, the day that you're ready, you'll go. 13 year ikhwati fillah. Now, ask 13 year old kid, is he ready? Is he ready to write the Quran that is already preserved and there's no mistake? If you ask him to copy one page from Riyadh al-Salihin, it's like, La ilaha, this is a child abuse. You know, one page of Riyadh al-Salihin, it's a child abuse. You know. Mentality are completely different. Mu'ad bin Amr bin Jamur, 14 years old. His brother, Mahu, 13 years old. They were big, they came, they were that sort. He said, where are you going? He said, I'm going with messenger of Allah. He said, well, you fit enough, come. Who did they kill? Who? Abu Jahl. I mean, that was the Fir'aun of the Ummah. Fir'aun of the Ummah. And Abu Jahl, he wasn't like, you know, a little simple guy. Abu Jahl was a camel by himself. I mean, the guy was huge. It was big. And then when they realized, and then the, what do you call him? Abdurrahman bin Auf, he said, these two little kids on my side. And I'm thinking, oh my God, I need someone more stronger. You know, as soon as I turn my face away from this kid, somebody's going to come from this side to attack me. I need someone to protect me. And all of a sudden, he said, I'm saying this to myself. And this one of the kids says, yeah, Amma. Do you know Abu Jahl? I said to him, Ya Ghulam, Ya Sabi, young boy, what do you want from Abu Jahl? He's the chief of the Quraysh. He's the Fir'aun of this Ummah. You know, what do you want from him? He said, I want to kill him. Subhanallah, you 13 years old kid. And he said, why? He said, because I heard, not that I saw, 
Not that I know for a fact. I heard that he used to insult the messenger of Allah when he was in Mecca, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I want to do this for the messenger of Allah. 13 years old kid. He said, as soon as that boy was done with me, the other boy did the same thing. Our kids, are they ready for responsibility? The answer is no. Are they ready? Are you ready for marriage? The responsibility is heavy. The answer is no. Do you know that Amr bin As, when he had his first baby born, his son, you know how old was he? Radiallahu an? How old was he? 11 years old. He was a father by the age 11. Ha. You tell these kids, why don't you mind your little sibling, your brother? Take care of him. I'll be back. If the boy is not being, you know, put in a microwave or in the dryer of the boy, the child is not dead, you should say, Alhamdulillah, that he kept his sibling alive. Say, Alhamdulillah. See, kids nowadays, you know, they, that age of 20, 18, 19, 25, they're not ready for marriage. They're not ready. Look at the girls. Look at the sisters. MashaAllah. She's willing to dress up for the occasion. She's willing to come out dressed like a full-grown lady. You know, MashaAllah. Red lipstick, if ne lipstick is not available. You know, chapstick, if the chapstick is not available. Vaseline from Dalaram is available. Alhamdulillah. If none of that is available, she come up, you know, with all makeup and all this, and she 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 goes and she buys, you know, high heel shoes from Payless shoes, place and then she comes. Now, she physically she may be ready, but is she mentally ready? The highest divorce nowadays in the Muslim countries. And in the West, it's worse. You know, in Kuwait, it's 79%. 79%. Do you know who have the lowest you know, percentage? Saudi. Can you imagine that? You know, everyone was trying to be like, to, to be westernized. Their, the percentage is high. In the West, mashallah, sisters and brothers, they get married. A year or two, Allahu Akbar. She's recycling someone else and he's recycling another lady. Why? Because the responsibility is not there. The day that we think they're responsible or you think you're responsible is the day, number one, that you take care of yourself and those who are around you. The day that you don't have to... You know, you don't need someone to say, you know, clean your room, fix your bed, do your homework. Oh, by the way, yeah, cut your hair. This afro of yours, that mashallah, if you hide, if you want to hide a wild cat, you can hide a wild cat there. Wallahi, if you want to smuggle marijuana or something, mashallah is a perfect place. If you want to do go ahead. You know, the day that you become responsible is the day that you say to yourself, the day that you say to yourself, I can take care of my family. I can, you know, my father is getting old. He's been driving, you know, taxi, you know, 12 hours a day. You know, I finished my school. Alhamdulillah. You know, I am going to work full time. I'm going to say to my father, just relax. You've been working for 18 years, for 20 years for us. For 25 years for us. Today, I am the man of the house. Today, I am your son. Today, I'll take care of you. I'll take care of my mother. I'll take care of my siblings. I'll be the firstborn that you will be proud of. I'll be the, your son that you always wanted. Relax. Do they do that today? No. As a matter of fact, you know, at the beginning of the month, they said, Dad, where's my you know, bus pass? Are you 29 years old? Go get a job. You know, 
Who's going to hire you? Even Tim Horst won't hire you. 29 years. What, what experience do you have? Well, I've been watching all NBA finals. I've been doing this, you know. No. See, only then you'll be responsible. If you're a man, women are funny, guys. Women are strange. You know, women, you can never, you know, they, they had this book. They came up with the book. And the book is 124,000 page. And they call it Perfect Book for Women. If you want to understand women, you, write, you read this book. 124,000 page. You can never understand them, ever. So if you think marriage is what you see in Hollywood and everything is sweet and nice, it's not. As a man, you need to be wise. You need to have hikmah. You need to have, you know, enough hinka or hikmah that you're able to do siyasa. You know, you need to be able to do, okay, she's mad. I don't know why she's mad, but alhamdulillah, she's mad. You know, and you said, honey, you mad? Why are you mad? You know, you should know. You know okay, I just came back from work. I don't know why you're mad. Would you please tell me? And then she'll be more mad. If you are a rookie and you don't know why she's mad, simply because you really don't know why you, she's mad, then you get in more trouble. You're standing on a quicksand. So what do you do? The best policy is, and I always say, what do you do, ya ikhwa? Apologize first. Honey, that was my fault. How could I do this? You know, I am so sorry. What did I do? Just tell me. You know, what did I do? Well, you didn't do this, so you say, I'm sorry. Young guys, they don't understand this. And they won't, be, they, won't, they won't understand why. Because number one, the response, the, and I'm not talking 100%. I'm talking about most of young guys. Their responsibility concept is missing. Young ladies, look at yourself. If your mother is still cooking, cleaning, you know, getting your siblings ready for school, you know, mining the, the chores or doing the chores of the house, then you are not ready for marriage. You're not ready for marriage. If you don't know how to put your kids to be, your siblings to bed, time to feed them, time to help them with the schools, time to, you are not ready for marriage. You're not. Now, I understand it's not your fault. I understand the society and your parents, you know, most of the parents, you know, we neglected you, it's true. But it's never too late. You can always redeem yourself. You can always come back and be a decent young person. If you want to do this, then you do the following. Brothers, I'm going to give you five tips. Sisters, I'll give you five tips as well. First, if you want to prepare yourself, understand that marriage is ibadah. And the nature of ibadah, it means there is a hardship involved. You want to perform salah, five daily prayers, there, are, there is a hardship that is involved. You got to get up early in the morning. You got to, you know, leave your house for Salat al-Fajr. You got to dress up. You got to drive to the masjid and pray. Ibadah. Marriage is also ibadah. Because it's ibadah, everything that you do, it should be something that you do for the sake of Allah. If your wife is not in a good mood, you don't say, she's not in a good mood. You know, who cares? You should say, you know, if I put a smile on her face, is ibadah for me. It's ajr for me. So take this project as an ibadah project. Not, you know, it's her turn to make me happy. I made her happy. No. Number two, understand the psychology of women. Their psychology is completely, it's not the way we think. For example, if you are married and you go and you buy, see the way they count things are different.
the way they count things, are different. You go out of your way and you, mashallah, you borrow 10,000. You say, Brother Saeed, can you lend me, lend me 10,000? I would say no because I don't have it. But then you go to the next guy and then you say, can I have 10,000? And he say, okay, mashallah. And then another brother, Ahmed, 10,000. Bona, mashallah, 15,000. Alhamdulillah. You know, you go there. And then you say, you know what? And you buy a nice, you know, 2011 Lexus. And say, honey, the license plate says, I love you. The keys. They... Now, as a man, you think you did something great. Am I right? I mean, you, 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 you bent backwards. You did your best. But for them, there's only one hasana. If you buy her Lexus with all that hardship, and buy a flower that is one, and this is one. No, this is, this is real. That's how human, that's how they think. For men, if you buy me, you know, mashallah, some, a nice car, I will remember you even in my grave. <laughs> I will remember you. Just give me that Lexus and I'll tell you. You say, Malak, you know, Malak al Ya Allah, forgive him. What about Shahada? Yeah, later on, inshallah. You know, I will remember you. For women, it's different. Their mentality is completely different. So if you think this is how they work, then you're wrong. Because in her calculation, you did one good thing, car, one more good thing, flower, one dinner, three. So you have three points. You have three points. They don't look at the size. Number three. No, we only have four minutes, not ten minutes, four minutes. Number three, what the other thing is, don't ever treat her like a man. Don't expect her to be like your friend. Like you, me, and Ahmed, we can, you know, get into an argument, disagree with certain things. Mashallah, what do you like from Tim Hortons? We're still brothers. Them is Palestine and Yehud. <laughs> they don't get a lot. You, you need peace conference. You need, you know, settlement. You need all this to bring everything to the table once again. So, don't never ever treat them like they are us. They are different. They are different creatures, different species, different, mashallah, different things. Completely. Number four, whatever happens is your fault. No, I'm not, wallahi, I'm not kidding. Whatever happens, it's your fault. If, you, if she gets into accident, then in somewhere in Mississauga and you hear working, it's your fault because you didn't drive her there. It's your mistake. Last but not least, and this is important. See, again, everything that happens is your fault. SubhanAllah, Shaitan chest, I lost that one. You know, I'll leave you with four things because the fifth I forgot, I swallowed. And I have how many minutes left? I have two minutes left. Now, the five for the sisters. Sisters, number one, I would say ibadah. Marriage is ibadah. Number two, your husband is nothing but a big baby. So treat him like a big, fat, ugly baby. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Babies are cute. You can kiss them. You can hug them. You can cuddle them. You know, men are not like that. You know, all hairy and all that. You know, <coughs> the mentality of men is different than the mentality of women. And in based on human psychology, what they tell you, men are different. Twenties. What do they look for? Physical appearance. Men, at the age from 20s, they're looking for a lady who is hot. A lady that's gorgeous. 30s, they look for someone who's intellectual. Someone that they can sit and talk to. Someone that they say, you know, I ha I'm having this problem you know, with my boss. I'm having this problem with my father. You know, what do you think? They need someone, you know, he, the, the man is, is like, Concern and he's worried about his job, he's worried about the family, and he wants to talk to her. And she's peeling potatoes and saying, You know, the baby, you know, he, you know, I, today I changed 15 diapers. 
that age, 30 and over, up to 40, that's not what they hear. They want to hear someone who can, they can conversate with. 40 and over, men are looking for someone who will take care of them, who will cook for them, who will feed them, who will clean for them, who will make sure, who, someone who will make sure that he is enjoying his life. These are the things that how men and women think, inshallah, I am supposed to be doing more, inshallah, but my time is up. So, subhanahu wa ta'ala, 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 wa